control of Gaza, something Israel does not want to see. Joining me now from Jerusalem is Carolyn Glick, senior contributing editor for the Jewish News Syndicate. Thank you for your time as always. Let's start there in the West Bank and, and what exactly is happening and the desire uh, from Palestinians about what a post-war Gaza looks like. So um, we are facing a situation in, uh, in the West Bank where we have an American-trained army uh, from the Palestinian Authority with American arms, American uh, munitions, and um, they are capable of causing devastating harm uh, on Israel. And what uh, unfortunately we've seen is that the levels of support among the Palestinians in these areas for Hamas is even higher than it is in Gaza. And they uh, all are also unified around the concept that uh, Israel has to be annihilated. So it's really a uh, tinderbox uh, in that area. And the idea that the Palestinian Authority, none of whose leaders has condemned in any way, shape, or form the atrocities of October 7th, uh, can be trusted to take over Gaza and form some sort of uh, governing structure that won't be terrorists is... Uh, is a fantasy. It's it's completely delusional, and yet that is the policy that the Biden administration is advancing and demanding that uh, Israel accept. You have also, Carolyn, expressed concern that the Biden administration is exerting too much pressure pressure on Israel, demanding they do one thing and not another. What should the role of the U.S. in your eyes be during this conflict? Look, I mean, when the United States was accused in the wars of Iraq and Afghanistan, that let's remember were thousands and thousands of miles from home. Of, uh, over, of overdoing it, of causing civilian casualties. You know, Israel, like every like-minded allied country, stood by the United States and acknowledged the basic fact that when terrorists use civilians as human shields in the war zone, that civilian casualties are the fault of the terrorists against whom the United States at the time and Israel today is fighting a just and lawful war. And we would expect the same uh, consideration from the United States. I mean, the 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 uh, spokesperson, the spokesman for the National Security Council, James Kirby, said just yesterday that Israel is doing more to protect civilians in Gaza than the United States ever did. So given that they acknowledge this fact, we would expect them to respect uh, our, our operational uh, model and recognize that, uh, of course, we're operating in accordance with the laws of war. We always do. We never have done anything other than that. And uh, treat us with the respect that, that, we, we, should, uh, that we should expect. Still, support for Israel's tactics on the ground militarily are waning internationally, and this adding fuel to the fire. There have been concerns over Israel's military conduct, videos of Israeli soldiers in Gaza destroying food, rummaging through homes, the claims that Israel's military deployed white phosphorus along the border with Lebanon, which would be a violation of international law. What is Israel saying about these allegations? I mean, look, the, the white phosphorus that Israel deployed was done in accordance with the laws of war, and the United States acknowledged that as well. I mean, you know, they take anything that we do and they say it's illegal because from the perspective of Israel's enemies in the UN and other places, we're not, it's illegal for us to defend ourselves. So if it's illegal for us to defend ourselves because they, they say that Israel doesn't have a right to exist, then any tactic that Israel takes, they're going to say is a war crime. But we know that that's not true. And, you know, the problem is that we end up having to dispel the allegations against us on each and every of, uh, one of the occasions, and we always do, but it takes a lot less time to spread a lie and a slander than it does to dispel it. You know, we have, an, we have an expression in Hebrew that says, go prove that you don't have a sister. And that's basically what we're, we're being uh, called upon to do uh, multiple times a day. And uh, what we really need to do is prosecute this war so that we can annihilate this uh, jihadist organization that, as the memory study showed, uh, is completely unified around the idea that not only do they want to annihilate Israel, but they want to annihilate Jewish people all over the world. And as part of the global jihad, uh, they want to destroy the United States and uh, rule the world in the name of their uh, version of uh, jihadist Islam. Is it wrong, though, Carolyn, to hold Israel to a higher moral standard that they can't stoop to the level that the terrorists have in some of the conduct that's being alleged, even flooding some of the tunnels with seawater to try to flesh out Hamas? Again, that's legal. Um, but again, um, it's not that they're holding Israel to a uh, higher standard than you would hold the 
Hamas Nazis too. Um, it said Israel is being held to an imaginary standard that no other nation on the face of the planet is held to. It's a model of perfection that no human being, no mere moral can possibly ever aspire to or achieve. And when Israel doesn't achieve uh, that lofty uh, that lofty standard, then we're accused of breaking the rules of law, of war. But none of this is true. It's all imaginary. No country, not the United States, not Britain, not uh, not Venezuela. Nobody is held to the standards that Israel is being held to. This has been an enduring uh, d discriminatory move by the UN and by European states and by the Arab states against Israel now going on 50 years. And it's always the same thing. They make up new rules and they only apply to Jews. And when we can't abide by them because nobody can, then we're accused of being war criminals. It's all it's all a lie. And then, you know, they say that we're breaking international law or something like that. And um, there is no international law that bars us from doing the things that we're doing. If there are excesses here and there in this unit or that unit, soldiers, as a matter of course, as they are in every military, are disciplined for their actions. But there's no, there's, there's no uh, uh, illegal intent or action on the part of the IDF uh, as a fighting force at all, and there never has been. And an important exercise, I think, for everyone to do is take a look at what happened on October the 7th. There is factual video mm -hmm. and photographic evidence to prove the atrocities that were carried out. Caroline Glick, as always, I appreciate your time and perspective. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your program. I appreciate it very much. Next week, the trial